Who would believe that there could be so much beautiful mathematics in a simple folded page? Take a piece of paper, fold it in half, Fold again the same way and then continue for a few folds. If you open the page out, you'll see a sequence of folds, not what you might expect perhaps, not the regular up-down that you might think but a more interesting sequence that's become known as the paper fold sequence. As I note here, we look at a series of upwards or downwards, or if you were a turtle tracing out the path, a series of left and right turns. What's become most publicly interesting perhaps is that if you open the page out and set each fold to 90 degrees, then the shape that emerges has been called the dragon curve or the dragon curve fractal. We can see how this emerges. So a simple, folded a simple piece of paper folded once at 90 degrees and so on. Perhaps even more interesting is that the dragon curve is not just a 90 degree curve. What if we folded, opened out the page to different angles other than 90? The patterns become more interesting. Now this paper fold sequence has applications to fields such as cyber security, error checking communication systems. But we're interested in it here from a, in some ways an artistic point of view. We get some beautiful, beautiful patterns and perhaps some unexpected ones. Suppose we bent the folds at 45 degrees. This starts to look chaotic, but is in fact quite regular. And the regularity can again be seen by reversing the folds. Other angles of interest, 60 degrees. Suddenly our, our dragon curve becomes a, a much more symmetrical shape. Equilateral triangles, not surprisingly. Then there's the golden dragon, 108 degrees. hundred and twenty degrees and so on. And these now start to give us an idea of why such a shape might be called a dragon curve. But we'll see more of that in a minute. Now let's look at our dragon curve from a different point of view. Once again, we'll start with an open page and fold it once. But this time we're going to consider the fraction of the page at each fold. So folded in half, if we consider the right hand side of the page to be zero, the left hand side to be one, when we fold once, a half sits at the fold obviously. But what happens when we fold a second time? 
Well, this is worth doing a few times with a real piece of paper to start to get your head around it. Folding a second time, the zero and the one are at the bottom of the fold, zero then one. Above them will be what was just the fold a minute ago, that's a half. And then at the actual fold itself, there are now two parts of the page, one quarter and three quarters, in that order. Now if I fold a third time, can you predict what, where the fractions will fall? A third fold, and we have our page with several levels. Zero and one at the bottom, a half above them, one quarter, the three quarters is further in, and now look at the other side. At the actual fold, we folded three times and the fractions of the page that lie at the fold, one eighth, seven eighths, five eighths, and three eighths in that order. Can you see how the values loop around? A fourth fold, and things start to get more complicated, but predictable. Do you notice a pattern in the sequence? For instance, along the left hand side are the points at the fold. At this time they are sixteenths. The first two, the ends of the green lines, one sixteenth and fifteen sixteenths. Notice anything? The next two are the two pointers, seven sixteenths and nine sixteenths. Each of them adds up to 16, the sequential fold fractions. So there is a pattern here and it's a lovely pattern. This is explored in greater detail at the paper folding and points hidden in a fold page from this site. Let's get an overall look at what we've got here. So this general drag and curve explorer lets you play with all the variables. For instance, four folds, and at this point they're all folded at 90 degrees, five folds, fractions are being shown, they can be hidden, they can also be reduced in size for when there are so many, and so on. Six folds, after six folds, the paper fold sequence, which is the number of folds, is now at 63 terms. Now we can keep going. Seven folds, eight folds, nine, and so on. This model will take you all the way up to 15 folds, which doesn't sound like many until you realize that at 15 folds, there are 32,767 terms. In other words, if you were able to fold a piece of paper 15 times, there'd be almost 33,000 folds on your page, which helps to explain why it's considered impossible to fold more than a few times. Let's look again at our simpler model. So this is currently is showing, let's start with four folds. We see from the left, we start with zero, the end of the page. If we folded four times, the page would have 16 divisions. And in order, one sixteenth, one eighth or two sixteenths, three sixteenths and so on. So when the page is opened out, uh, the, the folds fractions are in order. What's interesting to us is what happens when the pages are closed, when they're folded.
there's after th three folds one eighth one quarter three eighths a half and so on the eighths are in order if we fold again after two folds there are four four turns well three turns um, one quarter one half and three quarters it's hard to see at 90 degrees what's going to happen to the folded page but if we change the angle now we're looking more like a folded page and in fact it's not a bad model of the folded page as we saw earlier at the right hand side from the bottom the two lowest sheets on the page if you numbered them would be 0 and 1 the two extreme ends of the page next above them would be a half and then at the other side at the fold after three folds sorry two folds one quarter and three quarters as we saw earlier after three folds we start to get this idea of a pattern there's so much to explore and it's wonderful work with simple fractions now we're going to have a, a deeper look here at a couple of other interesting elements associated with this paper fold sequence and the dragon curve first let's consider dragons continued fractions and folds and here we go to another common important his, historically important mathematical question suppose we wanted to make a list of all the fractions or in fact all of the rational numbers well one approach might be to begin with the denominators of the fractions so first list, list those with denominator 1 that would be 0 and 1 as shown here now let's add those with denominator 2 so we have our 0 and 1 as the endpoints the only fraction with a denominator of 2 is 1 half add those with denominator 3 and we've now got a sequence 0 1 third 1 half 2 thirds and 1 this is called has been called the Fari sequence and again is explored in another page which uh, which takes the reader through various elements so this last one would be referred to as the Fari sequence of order 3 now there are many wonderful ways to visualize the Fari sequence one is called Ford circles and if you see the top animated GIF on the right you're seeing Ford circles so it turns out that if you draw a circle at each of the fractions suppose we're talking level 3 of our Fari sequence so I draw a circle at 0 at 1 third at a half 2 thirds and 1 well the secret is if you make the radius of the circle 1 over 2 times the numerator squared then you get a pattern like that now that sounds complicated but it just means that the circle in the middle between the two big ones well it's sitting at a half 1 over 2 times 2 squared is 1 8 so its radius is 1 8 the next two circles on the outside at 1 third will have radius 3 squared 9 times 2 is 18 1 18th and so on uh, it's well worth an exploration and again lovely fraction work for students now another way to visualize these sequences is using what are called fraction trees now three in particular are well known one's called the Fari tree another the Stern Broco tree and another the Calkin Wilkes tree and they all do the same thing in slightly different ways uh, as again you can see from the animation on the right forward circles lie behind but the actual structure of the tree 
lays out the fractions. Uh, so the Fari sequence lays out all fractions between 0 and 1. Stern Broco takes that, duplicates, mirrors those fractions, and turns them upside down. So where Fari gave us one third, one half, and two thirds, with one in the middle, Stern Broco takes that and reverses them and turns them upside down. Two thirds becomes three on two, a half becomes two on one, and a third becomes three. Now in this way, the stern broco tree goes from all rationals between 0 and 1 to all rationals. So it's a way to actually list and display every rational number, which is very cool. Again, lots to explore there. Stern broco tree even has its own continued fraction. It actually generates every convergent at every level. And this was discovered or developed, if you like, by Dr. Bruce Bates from the University of Wollongong. What's interesting here is it can also serve to generate the paper fold sequence and hence our dragon curve. It's quite simple to use Stern Broco continued fraction in this way. So what we're seeing here now is the Stern Broco continued fraction of order three. So it's as you would expect with a continued fraction. Um, this one will be less than 1 because it starts with 0, plus 1 over 3, minus 1 over 1, minus 1 over 3, and so on. There's a lovely simple sequence there that's not hard to generate and to continue for order 4 and so on. But if you take a slice, take each convergent of your continued fraction, so we'll leave off the 0, if you slice almost uh, at 45 degrees, the first fraction you come to is one third. Now one third as a continued fraction is 0, 3. It has an even number of terms. The next slice, the next convergent of your continued fraction is 1 over 1. Now 3 minus 1 is 2, 1 over 2 is a half. So if you're taking slices on the way down, the next conversion is a half its continued fraction is 0, 2. 0 plus 1 over 2, another even. The next convergent is 2 thirds. If you recognize this sequence, it's because we just talked about it above. What's cool is, so the convergence of order 3, a 1 third, a half, 2 thirds, 1, 3 over 2, and so on. If you express each of those as a continued fraction and then look at whether they are odd or even, you get your paper fold sequence. 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, and so on. Hold on. Let's have a look at this. Let's simplify our our picture. All right. All right, after three folds, paper fold sequence has seven terms. One, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero. The Stern Broco continued fraction of order three has eight terms, but leaving out the zero, we get our seven terms. Now, the convergent view, as we just talked about, if you slice at each step of the continued fraction, you get that sequence, one third, a half, two thirds, and so on. Let's hide those guys. Now the dragon view says the continued fraction for each convergent is either even or odd in number. Those give us the curves, the the terms of the paper fold sequence. Well, let's try degree four, order four. Now after four folds, paper fold sequence has 15 terms. Look at that sequence. One, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, then 
three ones, two zeros, one, two zeros. It looks random. We know it's not because, as we've seen, it's just a symmetrical build-up of each term. Now the continued fraction of order 4 one quarter, one third, two fifths, a half, three fifths, two thirds and so on. And as we just saw these convergence expressed as continued fractions lead to our paper fold sequence. While we're here, let's revisit our other point of interest, points in a fold. Let's start with three again, just to revisit. The order of folds from bottom to top when folded three times. Zero, one, a half, one quarter, three quarters, and then the eights in that order. So here we have a tool for exploring the order of our fractions as well. Let's dig a, more, a bit more deeply into these hidden fractions. So by now we've seen enough to start to get our heads around this sequence, the paper fold sequence, or if you like the dragon curve sequence. 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, and so on. But are there other patterns hidden within the dips and rises? What about if we just count the runs of repeated numbers? So we begin with two ones, a single zero, another two ones, two zeros, and we get a new sequence. Two, one, two, two, three, two, one, two, three, etc. Now if I was given this sequence, I could immediately use it to generate the paper fold sequence above, because I know that each of these terms alternates between 1 and 0. So the initial 2 says write down two ones. The next number is a 0, one of those. Now another two ones, and this time two zeros, three ones and so on. Now what happens if we express these, this pattern as a continued fraction? Well, like any good continued fraction, it approaches a number, in this case about 2.7. Now initially I thought, wow, that looks a lot like Euler's number E, 2.718, and perhaps because it's an infinite series, our paper fold sequence, perhaps it approaches that. Unfortunately, no, that was wishful thinking. I, I tried going further and further along and it didn't get any closer to, to E. Not entirely impossible, but it seems unlikely. So I visited an amazing site called the Online Encyclopedia of Integer Sequences. It recognized that sequence, but first, it recognized another one. So I put in our sequence above and one of the links was to this fraction sum which looks promising because it's the sum of powers of two and that's what we're dealing with with our paper fold sequence. It's all powers of two. So in this particular sum 1 plus a half plus an eighth plus 1 28th it has a formula and it, it generates this particular continued fraction. Now the thing with continued fractions is they're very hard to predict, to go backwards basically. Um, 
especially if it's an irrational or transcendental number. E is the only transcendental number that has a regular periodic continued fraction. If you look at the first few terms here, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 4, 1, 1, 6, 1, 1, what would you guess? Well, it turns out your guess would be right. The next is 8, then 1, 1, 10, 1, 1, 12. E has a, a lovely regular continued fraction. However, our version, the paper fold, the summed paper fold sequence, let's have a look at the continued fraction there. Well, we know the pattern, but sadly, it's not a nice, regular, easily predicted pattern. And this value of 2.7089, etc., um, is not easily converted back into a, um, a nice, simple form. So that's what makes this more interesting. I put in a pattern of twos and threes and ones, and the online encyclopedia points me to this particular value, 1.63. What's interesting here is that it consists entirely of ones and twos, and not only that, it's periodic, it's regular. So the, period, the continued fraction here is one, one, four ones in a row, then two, four ones in a row, then two. Now that means that you can actually use this to work out the exact value. If we write an equation, x equals one plus one over one, four times plus one over two, and then plus one over x, because x is one, 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 two, that encapsulates the entire value. Turns out, it gives us a value of 5 plus root 65 over 8. So we've got a real value here. But what's this got to do with our paper fold sequence? Well, the trick is, if we look at the sum of fractions, 1, a half, 1 eighth, 1, 1 28th, take half of those, a half, a quarter, 1 16th, and so on. This is now, this is a simpler, a simpler summation. It then gives us the continued fraction 0, 1, 4, 2, 4, 4, 6, 4, 2, 4, 6. Well, once again, it doesn't look periodic. And it leads to a value of 0.816. Still not seeing it? Well, if you line up the terms of that continued fraction and halve them, we're back to our original form. This is the summed paper fold sequence. So if, for some reason, if we double each of the terms, make that into a continued fraction, sticking one and zero on the front, double those, we get 5 plus root 65 over 8. Lots to play with, lots of interesting, and you know, a lot of it's quadratic equations, which is accessible to students at many levels. Some resources there to look at if you're interested. Our last mention of almost a, um, an interesting diversion around dragon curves and paper fold involves something I was only recently made aware of, and that is continued logarithms. So continued fractions are defined as, uh, as we've seen by repeatedly dividing um, and taking out the, the tail, recording the whole number part, turn the tail upside down and so on. A gentleman named Bill Gosper back in the 70s worked out that continued fractions are amazing for approximating most numbers. But they do have problems when it comes to very large and very small numbers. What do we used to do when we hit very large and very small numbers and we needed to operate on them? We turned to logarithms. He had the idea of using 
logarithmic base to build a continued fraction. Now I'm not going to try and go into detail here, it's been done elsewhere and there's a YouTube video to accompany this one about that. But what happened when I put in our paper fold sequence into Gosper's formula, what it produces is a different sequence again. This time 2, 2, 0, 3, 0, 1 and so on. Each of those is a power of 2. So in fact the paper fold sequence expressed as a continued logarithm is this continued fraction here. 4, 4, 1, 8, 1, 2, 1, 8, 4, 1, 1, 4. Once again not a, uh, not a periodic form but yet another interesting number, around 4.5. Now I've been looking into it, I've been doing some scratching around and I found that it's very very close to the log base 2 of 22.89. It's also very very close to 10 times that sum. It's clearly converging towards a mysterious value about 4.5 but what might this represent? What number could this be? Uh, it's an open question and an open question in mathematics is an invitation to explore. So here in this page we have various tools available to dig more deeply or a link here to the online encyclopedia or the reverse symbolic calculator which gave me those two forms or another device called the Ramanujan machine um, and again I'll let you play with that. If there are elements in this page that look interesting and worthwhile for you and all your students, please feel free to visit, to play, to explore. And if you find interesting things or if you have questions, I would love to hear from you. Uh, it's certainly for such a simple act of folding a piece of paper, the mathematics embedded in this and the possibilities for exploring new features are rich. Thank you. If perhaps all of the higher mathematics and the deeper digging is too much for you and your students, then there's another aspect of this page that I would invite everyone to have a play with. It involves the the software that I use to develop the various models, interactive models you've seen on this page, it's called GX Web and again I've um, spoken about it and presented about it elsewhere. It's free, it's browser based, thanks to the people at Saltire Software. GX Web is an amazingly simple tool to use. And if you were interested in exploring something like the, uh, the Dragon Curve, then I would point you to a couple of uh, YouTube videos that take you step by step through using GX Web to construct models like the ones you've just seen. Two in particular, my first version involved turning all of the, uh, building the dragon curve up with a, a various angles. I called it twisting the dragon's tail because by using a slider we can just change the angle from 90 degrees to any other angle. And then the second one I call unfolding the dragon's wings. And that's where we can vary the angle of, of each turn. So um, these are linked uh, from this page. There are, there are YouTube, a couple of short YouTube videos that take you step by step through this process and I would certainly invite and encourage anyone with an interest to come and have a play with this marvellous software.